Hi, my name is, is Eileen Cheech and I'm a member of the HFSA Communication Committee. And we have selected your presentation at the HFSA 2019 meeting in Philadelphia as one of the most important topics and we'd like to highlight it today. So uh, Dr. Dennis uh, McNamara, can you tell me um, where you work and, and your role at your institution? I'm the director for the Center for Heart Failure Research at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Excellent. And um, could you, you know, summarize actually your presentation today, which was wonderful? Well, I was speaking on the problem of peripartum cardiomyopathy. It's obviously a rare complication of pregnancy, uh, which occurs in roughly one in 2,000 live births, but it remains a major cause of maternal morbidity and mortality. Uh, let me start by saying that, unfortunately, the United States has the highest maternal mortality in the developed world, and we are one of the few countries where it's actually increasing. Uh, the burden of that mortality is shared in particular by women of color who have a rate of, unfortunately, maternal mortality which may be three times higher than, than other women. We became interested in whether bromocryptine could be used as a therapy for peripartum cardiomyopathy. Now, we have previously done the IPAC registry of peripartum cardiomyopathy in North America, which demonstrated that the majority of women recover. Uh, the recovery to an ejection fraction greater than 50% is evident in more than 70% of women. Unfortunately, in that study, 7% of women either died or underwent cardiac transplantation or LVAD implantation the first year. So clearly we have to do better. There's been data from e Europe that has suggested the use of bromocryptine based on the hypothesis that prolactin is cleaved by the stress of pregnancy by release of proteases, creating a smaller 16K fragment that is actually pathogenic and that has pro-apeptotic and anti-angiogenic properties and that by blocking prolactin secretion with the medication bromocryptine, that you could actually improve outcomes in peripartum cardiomyopathy. Uh, the evidence for that began with, uh, with mouse models, but has been moved into the clinic in several studies done over the last decade. Uh, there was a pilot study performed by Karen Sleva and published in circulation in 2010, which demonstrated that in a small group of uh, black South African women, uh, that randomization to bromocryptine actually improved outcomes markedly. However, the outcomes of the control group in that were much worse than we would see in a US or North American cohort. That was followed by a second study in, in West Africa of 96 women that again demonstrated a similar finding that women on bromocryptine recovered at a greater rate. However, overall recovery was less than we'd expect in the US. The most recent study has been in Germany, which demonstrated that, um, well, actually, I should say the European study only compared one week of bromocryptine with eight weeks of bromocryptine and had no control groups. They did not see any difference between these two treatment groups, but when they compared it to the North American registry, they felt that the, uh, their patients treated with bromocryptine had done better. There remain some questions about this in the absence of a true randomized trial in a multi, in, in a ethnically diverse uh, cohort. Uh, we think that before bromocryptine is actually widely utilized, we meet, need more evidence of its efficacy. We are pl in the planning phases, phases of what we hope will be an important study, a uh, rebirth for the randomized evaluation of bromocryptine in myocardial recovery therapy for peripartum cardiomyopathy. This study will potentially randomize 200 women at 50 sites across North America to either standard therapy alone uh, or standard therapy plus bromocryptine. We are hopeful that this trial can actually provide evidence of whether in fact bromocryptine is effective in peripartum cardiomyopathy. An additional note which I want to make is breastfeeding. There had been concern raised by the Europeans that given that uh, breastfeeding raises prolactin levels, that it was potentially harmful in peripartum cardiomyopathy. When we investigated that question in the IPAC North American Registry, we found no evidence that women that breastfeed had any worse recovery than those that did not. And in this country, we certainly have um, 
uh, equipoise and are, think it's reasonable for women who are well compensated to breastfeed. We hope through with rebirth to also collect a cohort of women excluded from the trial because of breastfeeding in order to determine indeed if that has an adverse effect. We are hopeful that bromocryptine has potential therapeutic benefits, but we need more evidence before we can routinely recommend its therapy in peripartum cardiomyopathy. Thank you, Dr. McNamara. This is very important. The work you've been doing and the dedication to this topic has been unbelievable. And you've really uh, been uh, the support and the strength and the pillar for, for actually all the peripartum studies. So thank you very much. Well, th thank you. But it's, uh, I might emphasize, it is a whole group. We have uh, the, all the investigators of the peripartum cardiomyopathy have played a very important role in these studies. And I, we could not do it without our entire group of collaborators. Thank you. Thanks.